I'm Chris Potts. This lecture is part of our unit on building effective distributed word representations. In this lecture, we're going to study methods for measuring the distance between high dimensional vectors. The guiding idea is that semantically related words should be close together in the vector spaces we build, and semantically unrelated words should be far apart. These distance measurements will help guide us in our search for better representations, and they are also the central component of a lot of technologies and assessment methods. Throughout these notes, I use this tiny little matrix as my running example. The conceit of this example is that we have three words, A, B, and C, given on the rows, and we have two documents, X and Y, as the columns. If we focus on the relationships between the rows, that is, the words, then we have two semantic dimensions given by the columns. Of course, realistic vector space models will have many more rows and columns, but sticking to two dimensions for the columns, just a few row dimensions, allows us to visualize the matrix, as I've done here. In this figure, the document X is represented along the x-axis, and the document Y is represented along the y-axis. The word representations are then points in this space. This little matrix is very simple, but it reflects an important semantic intuition that we hope to capture. Here's the guiding idea. Words A and B are pretty similar to each other. Their overall frequencies are very different, but their distribution across our documents is similar. One can imagine that A is a positive but low frequency word like superb, and B is a positive high frequency word like good. Maybe Y is a positive movie review and X is a more ambivalent one. In contrast, although B and C have similar overall frequencies, their distributions across the documents are opposed. Maybe word C is like disappointing. Hence, it's biased for the more negative document X. For semantics, frequency is generally a poor measure of semantic relatedness. So here's our goal. We want A and B to be close together, and B and C to be far apart. This looks daunting given the figure, which clearly associates B and C against A, but we'll pull it off. Before moving on, two quick notes. First, I've stated all the measures we look at as distance measures. For the most part, these can be inverted into similarity measures without much fuss. And second, I take the row perspective throughout to keep things simple, but all the measures can be used to get the distances between columns as well. Our first distance measure is Euclidean distance. In the two-dimensional plane, this corresponds to the shortest route between two points. The definition specifies that we get the absolute difference measure between the respective coordinates of the vectors we want to compare, square those values, add all of them together, and take the square root of that sum. So let's return to our toy matrix. To calculate the distance between word rows A and B, we work like this. The first set of comparisons is between these two values. The next comparison is here between these two values on the y dimension. We get that sum, take the square root, and I computed this ahead of time. The value is 13.6. And we can do the same calculation for the comparison between b and c. The first set of values comp compared is those two. Uh, and then we make this comparison, the final comparison. and again take the square root of that full summation and the value that we get in the end is 6.4. Here's the visual representation of the vector space again and we can now lay atop it the Euclidean distance calculations for the comparisons between A and B and between B and C. So now these appear as annotations. Uh, these are the two calculations that we just performed. Now remember, our goal is to associate A and B and to make B and C look different. Uh, here by these calculations, A and B are 13.6 units apart, and B and C are a mere 6.4 units apart. So Euclidean distance does not reflect the intuition that we're after. You probably saw that coming based on the look of the figure. The next measure that we'll look at is cosine distance. It achieves the modest goal uh, that we've set for ourselves with our toy matrix. 
To begin to get a feel for why it achieves this result, it's helpful to first consider the operation of L2 normalization, as defined here. Given a vector u of dimension n, the normalization of u is a new vector of dimension n, obtained by dividing each element of u by its L2 length. So intuitively, we calculate a single quantity, that's the value here, for each vector, and then divide all of its dimensions by that quantity. Uh, to illustrate, again with our toy matrix, here we'll use word A. Uh, we first calculate the normalizing quantity, and that would be given by 2 to the second plus 4 to the second, just referring to these values here. Uh, and then we take the square root of that summation, and it gives us 4.47. And then to get the new vector, we simply divide all of the values that are in the original vector by that new normalizing constant. Here's the fully row normalized vector space. When we compare this space with the old one, we can see that our guiding intuition is emerging. If we calculate Euclidean distance in this normalized space, A and B are close together in the space, and B and C are pretty far apart. You can see that here between these two distance comparisons. So first normalizing the space, and then using Euclidean distance, would meet our goal. Cosine distance incorporates the normalization step directly into the distance calculation. Here's the definition. The values in the denominator are the normalizing quantities we used for L2 normalization. The numerator is the dot product of the two vectors. And this quotient gives us the cosine similarity value here. We then just subtract this value from 1 to get a rough distance calculation. A bit more fiddling is actually needed to make this a true distance metric, but we can set that aside for present purposes. So here's our toy matrix again. To get a better feel for what the cosine measure is actually doing, we can add lines from the origin to each of these points, as I've done here. The similarity part of cosine, the cosine measure is then actually measuring the angles between these points. Here are the summaries for the calculations. Uh, the BC comparison is this angle, which is pretty large, whereas the AB calculation is measuring this angle here, which is very small. So as you can see, this measure directly encodes in the angular comparison the closeness of A and B as compared to B and C. In fact, A and B are now really close. Uh, the resulting values from doing this cosine distance measure yield the same ranking as we would get from normalization plus the Euclidean distance calculation that we performed before. To help bring that out, here's the L2 normalized version of our space, and the cosine calculation in this space gives exactly the same values as the ones we obtained without the normalization step. That is, once the vectors are normalized, renormalizing them, as in the denominator of the cosine calculation, has no effect. In this lecture, we've been guided by our toy VSM, given again here, and our goal to relate A and B despite their great distance in Euclidean space. At this point, we can frame the issue more precisely. The length of A, in the sense we define it for L2 norming vectors, is much smaller than the length of B. Here's the full set of lengths for all three vectors, so that you can see how the values reflect the underlying challenge that we set for ourselves. Uh, B and C have very similar overall lengths as compared to A. Which of our methods is able to overcome this length distance? Well, here's a quick summary. Euclidean distance failed to do it, therefore failed to achieve our goal, whereas cosine distance was able to achieve the goal quite easily. There are many other comparison methods. I've listed just a handful of them here. Um, you might try them out, and the code books that we use in this course will give you a chance to implement them and play around with them in real vector spaces. But just quickly, we could go through Manhattan distance is the notion of distance that you would get from traveling uh, in, along city blocks. Uh, the next set of measures here are probabilistic ones. Uh, and then finally, these down here are all in a sense derived from the matching coefficient. And there are a few other options besides dice and jacquard that fall into that class.